The next lighting component we're talking about is the ambient contribution, which is a solid color, similar to defining a color with the word color, or using emission. However, it's slightly more complicated than that. So we're going to be calling this vari variable emission, and it's called emission in the inspector as well. It's a color. And we're going to write the word ambient in the material block, and then the name of the variable, which we'll, we're calling ambient. So now we can click on our material and affect that ambient color. Make that red. It's not showing up yet. We need to make sure, unlike with emission, that we're taking the render settings into account. So ambient light is currently black. If ambient is black, then you won't see anything because what happens is what you put in your material block gets multiplied by this. So we'll make that white. We're still not seeing anything. One more thing we need to do is check this box. Toggles the built-in lighting on and off. So even though it doesn't matter if we enable or disable the one light we have in our scene, directional light, unlike emission, you need to have this button checked in order to see ambient and the other types of lighting we'll go over later. So how, would you, how do you think about using these two things together? Well, in render settings, you can think about this as sort of a poor man's radiosity um, every all the light bouncing off in your scene, combine that in your mind, and this is going to be um, the ambient color for everything in the scene. And then what you use in the material is going to be multiplied by that in the shader. So that's what happens with these uh, with this block. You have the the render settings color multiplied by this to get a resulting color. So considering that was white, whatever we put in should be what we get out. However, you'll notice that this color does not match the very bright saturated color we have that we have here. And that is because whatever you define in the render settings is actually halved before it gets to the shader. So the way you could undo that and the way the reason why Unity Technologies presumably did this is because the, all the built-in shaders use double, at least the ones that I know of, use double at the end so that you can over-brighten things. So if you use that, then you'll get, if you have ambient set to white, whatever color you put in for ambient. So if you, don't, if you need a color tint, then that's what you would do. However, if you don't, and you can use double to get that effect, but there's also another way to get the same result. So we're going to define a variable called ambient strength and we'll make that a float so we can observe what all the numbers are doing here. And so instead of using a color to define ambient, we'll now be using a constant that we create using this variable ambient strength for red, green, and blue. So let's go ahead and set this. We'll set it to, to 1, and we see medium gray. We can take this down, and it gets clamped at 0. These negative values have no effect. But as we go past 1, which is there, we can continue brightening. So set this to about to, uh, 8, then go back into render settings. and start darkening this and eventually when we get down be below 0.25 brightness we're going to see that that how that number is having an effect it's white um, as soon as you get to a quarter because again it's being halved so take take a quarter and then have it to get the actual result that's coming into the shader so one eighth multiply that by eight and you get the result which is full-on bright white. So greater control of the ambient contribution can be gained from using variables for RG and B. Um, if you use only one then you're not going to be able to tint the color, you'll just be able to affect the strength. Um, and if you don't use this but instead you use a color property then this value is going to be clamped between 0 and 1 for every color component. So this will work, it's a little bit easier to use because you get to use a color picker 
but you can define an RGB color using a variable for each component if you need to go above the value of 1.